39 different executive actions have taken place since Eisenhower by virtually every president, giving millions of people the relief that President Obama is doing with the action he's taken. Look to Ronald Reagan, your hero. Look what he did to keep families united and to protect people in our country. If the president truly follows through on this attempt to impose his will unilaterally, he will have issued a rebuke to his own stated view of democracy. We are prepared uh, to assert uh, a legal action against the president because uh, we believe what the president is doing is completely unconstitutional. There, there you have it, the governor-elect of Texas uh, promising a lawsuit about this uh, unilateral executive action. And he is not the only one. We've just gotten word that Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt also promises a lawsuit. He says in a statement, if the president takes an executive action that violates his constitutional duty to faithfully execute immigration laws passed by Congress, we will take action to hold him accountable. And before we get back to the panel, one more excerpt of the president's speech, which has just been handed to us, quote, the actions I'm taking are not only lawful, they're the kinds of actions taken by every single Republican president and every Democratic president for the past half century. And to those members of Congress who question my authority to make our immigration system work better or question the wisdom of me acting where Congress has failed, I have one answer, pass a bill. Judge, you think it's unconstitutional. Uh, Tell us why. The president's power is profoundly unconstitutional. Profoundly unconstitutional. Here's why. The president has this power called prosecutorial discretion. Basically lets him ratchet up or ratchet down what law enforcement's going to do. So he says to the Justice Department, ratchet and DHS, ratchet down the, uh, the deportations. Ronald Reagan did that. George H.W. Bush can do that. He can do that for a class of people, a small class of people, 100,000 here, 100,000 there. When he does it for half the foreign nationals who are in this country illegally, the practical effect of that is not just nullifying their deportations, it's nullifying the law. It's rewriting the law. When he says, I won't deport you if you do A, B, C, D, and E, which he's going to say in a few hours, and he makes up the A, B, C, D, and E. It doesn't come from the Congress. So, he's rewriting the law. So this is a, a matter of scale. It's a, it's a matter of degree, absolutely. A president can say, I'm not going to deport women over 85 or women of childbearing years. But when he says, I'm not going to deport half the illegals here, he has violated his oath to uphold the law. The American people are entitled to know the president's going to uphold the law and not rewrite it. But, A.B., that raises the question of where do you draw the line if it's a matter of scale, a matter of degree. Right, and there's no precedent for that. This is largely untested in the courts, and it'll, it'll go there to be decided. But it is, the judge is right, it's that he's, it's never happened for so many people. Now, the other thing is, is that um, it is, what is the definition of faithfully execute? I mean, it's, it's obviously in the eye of the beholder, but the president is going to talk a lot uh, tonight about accountability, about them paying taxes, getting into the system, um, but it is amnesty because it is forgiveness. It is technically forgiveness of law breaking. And so we're going to see this played out. What's interesting is that the polling shows support for what the president's doing, just not the way in which he's doing it. So as, as we look to this being answered and reviewed in the courts, it'll be interesting to see politically what's happening in the next two, four, six weeks. Maybe the maybe Republicans Republicans in Congress don't pick a fight on this. Maybe it becomes more popular in six weeks in the polls. Maybe it doesn't. And Hillary Clinton at some point has to announce in eight weeks she's running for president and doesn't know what to say. I think we have no idea because of the polling that says most of the country is with this permitting, this forgiving. Oh, this is not doing it by fiat. If this goes to the courts, Charles, the president may be his own worst enemy, given the, the compilation of statements he has made against executive action. Well, it's an amazing string of statements he's made for years. Remember, he has control of the Congress in 09 and 10, where he can do this through legislation. He doesn't lift a finger. And then for the next four years, he repeats again and again that this would be imperial, monarchical, outside the Constitution. It's not uh, allowed under our system. Now, all of a sudden, he discovers these other cases. As the judge says, it's not actually only a matter of scale. It's completely undermining the intent of the law as written. The law says if you come here illegally, you aren't allowed to stay, and you certainly aren't allowed to work. In fact, you're, the prohibition on work is so strong that if anybody hires an illegal alien, the state will punish the person who hires him. All of a sudden, Obama's going to issue a permit to allow these people to work. It's a complete undermining of the law and rewriting of the law. 
I think if it ends up in the courts, the courts will rule strongly against the president because otherwise any president can rewrite any law at any time by saying, I waited long enough, I'm tired of waiting, do what I tell you, or I will enact a new law myself. That's going to do it for the panel, but stay tuned for a recap of this week's truly extreme weather.